Our next issue, I opened Alicia's envelope. I feel Kim and I will be further along in building our empire if we truly learn to work together. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss Married to Medicine, season 10, episode 13. And before we get into it, let me just tell you, Dr. Alicia knows exactly where that money is. It's stored away in a secret account and I don't blame her because Kema is insufferable, misogynistic, and his views, no ma'am. No. Uh -uh. But y'all, this was a pretty good episode and I have a lot to say. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. So we open up the episode with the ladies on the golf course and the men are at a cooking lesson. So we see the ladies being taught how to play golf by the golf instructor. And surprisingly, Sweet Tea was the best. She hit the ball the furthest. Everybody else was hitting their balls into the lake, some in the trees, but Sweet Tea won. I said, I know that's right, girl. And golf is definitely a sport that I want to get into. I love playing tennis and I've heard such great things about golf. So I definitely want to try my hand at it. And to look cute in a cute little golf outfit too, yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> Any excuse to buy a new outfit and get dolled up, I'm there. <laughs> and then all the cute guys with the little coin too on the golf course, like count me in, but I digress. So now we jump over to all the husbands. They're in their cooking class and they're divided into two teams. So I think it was Team Cecil and Team Eugene. Now, I already knew that Eugene's team would win because we know that in Eugene's spare time, he loves to cook. But Cecil's team, they cooked some shrimp with I think some squash and some string beans. And then Eugene's team cooked shrimp with grilled pineapples and my mouth was watering. I love pineapples and especially grilled pineapples. So you know I was drooling and I love shrimp too. <laughs> but like I said, I don't know why anybody would go up against Eugene because Eugene was winning hands down. And the way Kema pissed me off, he sounded so ignorant saying, oh, cooking isn't manly at all. And I'm like, you do know, no matter what your gender is, um, you do need to know how to cook to some level if you do want to survive and eat. Unless you have private chef money, sir, then you should know how to cook the basics at the very least. Also, you sound so dumb saying, oh, it's not manly when some of the best chefs in the world are men. So what are you saying? I just said, if I were Dr. Alicia, the way I would be saying shout out to everybody, I had fun. Oh! <laughs> Shout out to everybody. It's I have fun. Good, I gotta be good. <laughs> and if he's like this on camera, imagine what he's like off camera. So now everybody's back at the house and we see the guys playing dominoes. They're asking the ladies, how was golf? The ladies are asking them, how was the cooking lesson? Who won? And now we see Eugene Ask Sweet Tea, how does she feel when Dr. Jackie hit her with that sweet baby comment? So you have Toya jump in about how Sweet Tea tried to apologize. And Dr. Jackie pretty much said, return to sender. I don't accept your apology. Apologies are for you, not for the other person. So now Dr. G jumps in and he says, it's over and done with. The ladies are all getting along. And they were like, not so fast. That's not true. Just because we hung out and played some golf together does not mean that we're good. So now Dr. G goes on to say that, at the end of the day, he just wants Sweet Tea to make things right because he does not want her to be in conflict with these women. It's clear that Dr. G holds Dr. Jackie in very high esteem and he's not trying to see his wife go out sad by attacking one of the OGs of the group. Even though I feel like Dr. Jackie is very smug, condescending, and she feels like she's above reproach. Whereas she can say whatever she wants, but nobody can ever check her. 
But like I said, Dr. G does not want any problems and he wants his wife to fix things immediately. So now Dr. Simone comes out and she says, okay guys, it's time to go because me and Cecil just secured this 80 foot yacht. Now we all know that when it comes to a Bravo celebrity on a boat, there's always some drama. So I was bracing myself the entire time for there to be some blowout fight. <laughs> <laughs> because these Bravo celebrities do not have the best track record, especially on Housewives. There's always drama. Now, as they're on their way to the yacht, we see Phaedra, Dr. Damon, Dr. Heavenly, I think it was Cecil. They're all in one car together. And you have Phaedra bringing up the whole mess about Kemma and Dr. Alicia not having oral sex. So now you have Dr. Heavenly say that that would be a problem for them too. Now, the way I could not stop laughing because the way Dr. Damon gets so uncomfortable anytime they talk about sex, he was like, we don't need to discuss this. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me, but every time Dr. Heavenly and Damon are in a shared confessional, Dr. Damon always looks uncomfortable. His body language gives that he's being held hostage. <laughs> so now they're on the yacht and I will say Dr. Simone and Cecil, y'all did that. The yacht was gorgeous. And Dr. Jackie was feeling herself because she got up and started dancing and doing a little something. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Curtis saying that they should get on yachts more because obviously his wife is a new person. I was like, Curtis, shut up. I don't want to hear anything that you have to say. <laughs> you and that high booty. And one of y'all had me screaming. You said he has a high booty and wide hips. <laughs> And shout out to Alexander Rogers, because I'm pretty sure that he was the first one to talk about Curtis's high booty. <laughs> so all the ladies are just talking amongst themselves. We see Dr. Jackie and Dr. Alicia talking. And of course they're talking about last night. So Dr. Jackie says that silence is golden and that she didn't want to say anything because things would have escalated had she responded back to Sweet Tea cursing her out. So now we see Dr. Jackie say in her confessional that she should have apologized to Sweet Tea for not slapping her in her mouth like a mother should have done. And let me just stop right here because Dr. Jackie, this is what I'm talking about. You have this condescending attitude. At the end of the day, Sweet Tea is a grown ass woman. Yes, she's younger than you, but stop acting like she's some child. It's rude and it's just not right. I've told you guys many times, I have never been of the mindset that just because somebody is older than me, that I have to bite my tongue. That's never been me even when I was little. And while I think that Sweet Tea showed poor emotional control lashing out like that, I don't blame her because all that sweet baby and all that, okay girl, you know, baby girl, it's very condescending and that's gonna piss anybody off. And you can't expect everybody to sit there and take that. Respect, in my opinion, is a two-way street. You can't disrespect me and think that I have to sit there and take it because you're older. I I'm so sorry, but that's just not how it works. Dr. Jackie has gotten away with being very nice nasty for many years. And I think that she's just not used to people speaking up and speaking out. So we see Sweet Tea walk over to Dr. Jackie and Sweet Tea is visibly nervous. Now I said, girl, you cursed her out with your chest in the last episode. Don't get nervous now. You said what you said. Now just talk to her woman to woman and have a conversation. But don't be all scared and afraid now when the damage is done, you can't put the milk back in the car in. It is what it is. Now, was it just me or was Dr. Jackie being sarcastic when she said, hi, sunshine, how are you? And I was just like, I detect some shade, yes, no. <laughs> now, let me just say, this conversation showed me not to assume because I was expecting Jackie to double down on how she felt, not apologize, not own up to anything. And she was surprisingly open. She said, look, sweet tea, you came into this group at a very vulnerable time and me and the other women weren't that nice to you. We were very rude to you, very mean. We did make jokes about you and your situation and it wasn't right. And I was like, Dr. Jackie, is this Dr. Jackie? 
who's actually taking ownership. I was like, am I actually hearing this right now? Are these words really coming out of Dr. Jackie's mouth? And then she goes on to add that she doesn't want Sweet Tea to hurt anymore. And she's willing to let what Sweet Tea said to her go if Sweet Tea's willing to release her. Then Dr. Jackie goes on to give Sweet Tea a kiss on the cheek. And I was happy to see them move past it. And it really did warm my heart that Dr. Jackie took full accountability. She didn't say, well, you called me that, so I don't want to talk to you. She said, listen, I get it. The baby girl was condescending. We did make fun of you. It wasn't right. You came in at a very tough time and we own it. I own it. And you could tell that Sweet Tea needed to hear that apology and that ownership because she's been hurting. I'm sure it can't be easy marrying a man almost 30 years older. Then on top of that, you join a hit TV show that's been on for 10 years and these women used to be good friends with your now husband's ex-wife. So there's a lot going on. And also they really made Sweet Tea the butt of the jokes, the way they would always talk about her. I mean, they did her dirty in this first half. And I'm not saying that Sweet Tea is innocent because all season long, she's been calling them old ladies and they've been going back and forth on Instagram. So it's a mess. But we can all acknowledge that they did not give her the easiest time. I screamed so loud when Sweet Tea said that Dr. Jackie is a wolf in church ladies clothing. <laughs> so now it's time for them to have a delicious dinner on the yacht. And that food looked amazing. My mouth was watering. They had seafood mac and cheese. I was just like, I need to stop watching these shows because I always get hungry. <laughs> mouth just watering, okay? It's watering right now. <laughs> I need help. I need help. <laughs> Now, mind you, the husbands are playing this silly game to see whose wife is going to serve them their plate first. Phaedra was too funny. She said, girl, I'm single. I'm fixing my own plate. <laughs> <laughs> now, just a quick side note. I have been enjoying Phaedra so much on Traders. If you're not watching Traders, please do. I was skeptical about the show, but when I tell you that show has my full attention, Baby, that show is too good. That is peak entertainment. No, NBC is not paying me to promote the show, but let me tell you something. They need to because the way I go up for that show, when I tell you that Traders is the perfect show for Phaedra, and I never thought in a million years that I would find Phaedra to be so likable and so charming and so funny, but she is winning me over week after week after week. And the way she had me screaming in this episode too, I said, am I actually starting to like Phaedra Parks? Child, who knew? <laughs> but anyhow, we see Dr. Alicia serve Kemma's plate first. And on top of that, she gives him a kiss. So all the husbands are like, oh, okay. Like, look at that. You have Kemma being ignorant, joking around saying, oh, that's how you train your wife. I was just like, you have got to stop saying that. I just need for Kemma to keep his mouth shut. It's annoying. And all this training up your wife and teaching her how to be a good wife, like stop. She's not a dog. She's a woman. She's a person. I don't know how she deals with it, but you know what? If she likes it, then who am I to judge? Now, it was funny because when Dr. Jackie came out, she gave Curtis his plate and then she gave him a kiss too. So they're all like, oh, okay. So now you have Eugene complaining because he didn't get a kiss. So now he has one of the crew members ask Toya to come back out and give him a kiss. So Toya says, well, tell my husband, I'll give him a kiss later on his privates. <laughs> now, of course, when Toya said that, you already know they're gonna start talking about sex and each other's sex lives. And of course, the whole topic comes up about Dr. Alicia and Kemma not participating in oral sex. So Dr. Alicia says that she's satisfied with Kemma's penis. Now, it seemed like Toya was lit and had a lot to drink because she blurts out, well, that's all that you're getting. Dr. Jackie was like, Toya, like, don't say that. Like, girl, be quiet, eat your food. 
don't say anything else. And Dr. Alicia was upset. I was just like, damn. <laughs> One thing about Toya, Toya is always going to say what she wants to say. <laughs> she has no filter. <laughs> so Dr. Heavenly is confused. She's like, okay, so spell it out for me. So he doesn't go down on you, but you still go down on him. And Dr. Alicia says, no, he doesn't want it. He thinks that I'm too much of a queen to get down on my knees and get so low. They were all like, girl, okay, I guess. And I was just like, Dr. Alicia, really? Nobody at that table was buying it. Toya said, okay, girl, that's what he wants you to believe. So here goes Dr. Heavenly saying that she likes to please her man any way she can. And if she could put it in her ear, she would. <laughs> and I said, I wouldn't be surprised if she's already done that. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just me, but I really don't want to picture Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Damon having sex. And I'm definitely not trying to imagine her sticking Dr. Damon's penis in her ear. <laughs> Phaedra had me on the floor. She said, y'all just get a rose toy. It's better than any man. She goes on to add that that rose toy is so good. She knows that it's torn up a few homes. <laughs> so here's where things get a bit tense between Toya and Dr. Alicia. We all know that Toya does not know how to leave well enough alone. So she's asking Dr. Alicia, why does Kemal always say that he trained her up and does that bother her? So Dr. Alicia says, no, it doesn't bother me because I know that he's joking. And I said, now, Dr. Alicia, really? I don't think for one minute that your husband is joking. I think that he means that. And I also feel like you're a bit delusional to say that the other women are always trying to find fault with your marriage because you have the marriage that they want. I said, if anybody has the strongest marriage on this cast, it's definitely Toya and Eugene. So I don't know why you think that they all want your marriage. I don't think so. So please. And also, Dr. Alicia, let's not forget that you told your husband once upon a time that he's not a man. So girl, I don't know about all this. Oh, well, they want my marriage. They're just jealous because my marriage is the best. Girl, no, it's not. Now, while they're talking, we jump back over to the husbands. And of course, Kama is going on and on about how you have to train your women. And I just said, child, you have your wife over there saying that you're just joking. And you're over here with the men saying that's how you train them up. Very interesting. But if your wife wants to be in denial and think that you're just joking, then so be it. So we jump right back to the women. And when I tell you that Toya would not let the subject go, she goes on to ask Dr. Alicia, how did Kemma get her so well trained? So now Dr. Alicia snaps and she says, you know what, Toya, Eugene needs to train your ass. And I was just like, girl, Toya is not the one that you want to go up against, sis. I said, Dr. Alicia, wrong road. I said, wrong road, because Toya will eat you up. So now Dr. Alicia really sounds crazy. She goes on to say that a man should be able to temper his wife and that if Eugene gives Toya a specific look, Toya should receive that and calm down. And I said again, Dr. Alicia, you sound silly because Eugene loves that. He loves all of that about Toya. He loves how feisty she is. He loves that she has a big mouth. So I said, girl, you're saying all this, but Eugene loves it. And then we see Eugene and Toya in their confessional. And Eugene says, I have no desire to try and control Toya because one, you can't control another human being. And the secondhand embarrassment jumped out. Dr. Alicia tells this poorly timed joke saying that Eugene needs to put a collar on Toya and zap her with a remote. So Toya was like, girl, we have a remote, but it's used for something else on our privates, not for that. So now you have Dr. Alicia still saying the same thing and she's laughing at her own joke. And I was just like, yeah, Dr. Alicia is corny. And if I'm being honest, she seems like a nice woman, but I don't think that she's cut out for reality TV. I think that she's boring and I wouldn't mind if she's not asked back for next season. So now their time on the yacht has come to an end and now they're back at the house. So for their last night there, they're having a slumber party in the living room. 
Now, I caught that shade that Dr. Jackie threw. She said, this whole setup reminds me of middle school and sweet tea should feel right at home. I said, girl, that's why she cursed you out because here you go with the shade. <laughs> <laughs> so they all gather around in the living room and of course they're playing a messy game by Dr. Simone. Dr. Simone wants them all to write on a piece of paper what are the major issues in their marriage and then put them in an envelope where she'll read them out loud. There's no way that I would even open the door for this kind of scrutiny by discussing major issues in my marriage or relationship with anybody. And I damn sure I'm not doing that in a game. Absolutely not. Y'all know I'm the biggest believer in moving in silence. I feel like, please don't open your mouth about issues in your relationship. Take that up with the good Lord. Write it in your journal. Go seek out some counseling, a therapist. But talking about your issues with friends and random people, acquaintances, mm-mm. I just said no, I would not be playing this game. Sorry, I would have written on that envelope. We don't have any issues. We're perfect. I'm not playing. <laughs> so Simone reads the first card and it's Curtis's card. And it says that his problem in their marriage is Dr. Jackie's social media use. And he complains that she has a demanding career. And when she comes back home, she's on her phone. She's on Instagram and he just wants her time. So now Dr. Jackie says she understands that, but a lot of times she's promoting an ad, she's responding back to people. And Curtis says, you have to remember that you can't be all things to everybody and you need to carve out time for us. Now, Curtis, you're the same man who cheated on Dr. Jackie and you're always in the Dominican Republic every chance you get. So sir, not too much on what Dr. Jackie needs to stop doing. You need to be happy that she's still with you. So now Toya jumps in to respond to Curtis and she says, but Curtis, when you're married to a doctor, that's just not the case. She says that when Eugene comes home, a lot of times he's tired. He just wants to be alone and watch TV. So Eugene jumps in and says, now look, let's be clear. When Toya wants my time, I've never turned her down. Then he goes on to say that he's cut out Toya's weave before. And we find out that Kama has actually cut out Dr. Alicia's weave before too. I said, oh, really? The same man who thinks that cooking is not a manly thing to do and is beneath him, that's woman's work. You've actually cut out your woman's weave? Wow. Now you have Dr. Heavenly say that she doesn't need her man to take her weave out. And I said, Heavenly, half the time, the hair that's on your head looks like it was plopped on. So I don't think that anybody's ever taken it in or taken it out. <laughs> it looks like it's just been there for years. The way Dr. Simone is committed to the mess, she said, we're getting off track here. Let's read another envelope. So she reads the next one and it's from Dr. Alicia. Dr. Alicia says something like, she wants her and Kama to work together more as a team. And Dr. Alicia gives an example of what she means. So she says that they're both into real estate. And a few years ago, she was telling Kama that they should get into owning multi-units to rent out. So she goes on to say that Kama didn't want to do that. And instead, he wanted to invest their money in crypto in the stock market. So according to Dr. Alicia, they made a lot of money from the stock market and crypto and she told him to cash out, but because he felt like she didn't have the expertise, he didn't listen to her and they lost that money. Now hearing this, you can tell that they have some major issues. And if I were Dr. Alicia, that would be hard to come back from because the fact that my spouse doesn't value my judgment to cash out because I have a feeling that we might lose this money and that we end up losing that money, I would be pissed. And I don't know if I could come back from that because we're now out of all this money because you didn't want to listen to me because you feel like I don't have the knowledge when clearly I had knowledge of something. So now Kema interjects and he says that he's the financial one in the marriage and how Alicia is a spendthrift, she spends every dime that comes in the door. 
Then he goes on to drop some tea that Dr. Alicia does not have an account for $150,000 that went out in a few months. But best believe that Dr. Alicia knows exactly where that money is. Kema doesn't. But if you think for one minute that she just spent that kind of money and has nothing to show for it, you are sadly mistaken. It's in a secret stash somewhere. And girl, I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Dr. Alicia, this is the marriage that all the other women are jealous of. Hating on what? Hating on this? <laughs> In the words of Dr. Wendy Osefo, <laughs> the way that episode in season six lives rent free in my head, pure comedy. <laughs> And it was in such poor taste when he added, I have to control the spending because if not, we'd be in the poor house. I said again, don't sit up there and throw your wife under the bus. That's a bad look. And then you have Dr. Simone getting on Dr. Alicia and she's like, you have to be accountable for your spending. And I said, you guys should have never agreed to play this stupid game in the first place. So now Dr. Simone goes on to ask all the couples, if they feel like they have sex enough. Dr. Jackie says, no, I feel like I'm always tired. You have Toya joking around saying, but didn't you take the O shot? And Dr. Jackie says, girl, I took all the shots and I'm still tired. Now, personally, I'm shocked that they have sex at all. And whatever Curtis is getting from Dr. Jackie, he needs to count himself blessed because I will never let it go that he cheated on her and he needs to be happy that she's still there. So Dr. Damon says that him and Heavenly have enough sex, they're good. Now Eugene says that they have a lot of sex now. It's been great in recent months and how it's because they're communicating better and he's lost 40 pounds, so he has more energy. Now I believe it because Toya does not strike me as a woman who would stick around if the sex was lacking. So I'm not surprised to hear that they're doing well in that department. And Toya and Eugene's banter is so funny because Eugene made a joke about if he wakes up and taps her on the shoulder, you know, he doesn't want her to say no to him. And she said, no, I'm not, but I'm just saying you better put me back to sleep. I said, girl, I know that's right. <laughs> So now Dr. Simone turns to Cecil and she's like, Cecil, are we having enough sex? And Heavenly is so shady. She's over there saying, uh-uh. <laughs> I said the shade of it all. <laughs> but she was saying what I was thinking too, because I don't think that Dr. Simone and Cecil have had sex in ages. Honestly, I forgot that Sweet Tea and Dr. G were even there. Sweet Tea says that they have enough sex, but, but because of her endometriosis, it's sporadic. And now we see that Phaedra wrote on her card that she's single and loving it. So we end the episode with Phaedra saying that she was with her ex-husband since they were teens. Now I said, Phaedra, why are you sitting up here lying? Because I remember very clearly when you joined the show, you said that you and Apollo met at a stoplight or in traffic. And this was in the 90s when you were in your 20s. So I don't know why you're changing the story now and saying that you guys were teen lovers. I said one thing about Phaedra, Phaedra will lie like a rug, honey, because girl, it's a new story from her every single week. And that's why she's so good on Traders. And again, if you haven't watched Traders, please check it out. But y'all, that was the episode. That was my recap. I hope you all enjoyed. And I'm really happy to see that next week is the finale. I'm glad that they're not dragging it out because after Quad left, the episodes became kind of stale. But y'all, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye.